Today is quite rainy and gray. Doozy of the day to go book shopping. I got some goodies. <laughs> YouTubers, I'm Cassandra Joy and welcome to my channel. Today is quite rainy and gray and just not really fun weather-wise. So I got a coffee pick-me-up from Purebred. This is a mocha latte iced with oat milk and honey. Mmm, so good. So today I thought instead of taking you thrifting, I would spend a little time around my darling small town and do a little bit of secondhand book shopping. I've recently decluttered all my books and I actually have room to spare on my bookshelf, which is unheard of for me. So I thought it was high time to add to it again. <laughs> so we're gonna go down the block to Around About Books, which is one of my favorite secondhand bookstores, and just have a little browse with coffee in hand. actually snowing right now. I thought it was raining, so I grabbed my umbrella and then put it quickly back because it's not rain. It's snow. I chose a doozy of the day to go book shopping, but there's actually a lot of construction in front of it, so I'm hoping the shop's open, but we'll see. Yes, they're open. Hello. How are you? I'm cold. <laughs> it, it got really cold really quickly. <laughs> oh my goodness, I'm glad I wore this shawl. Shoo! Oh, that's cool. I used to love these. I have that one. I need to pick these up. So I just happened upon this book called Jane and the Twelve Days of Christmas by Stephanie Barron, and it says, Being a Jane Austen Mystery. There's road work going on outside, if you couldn't hear. <laughs> Apparently they're working on the pipes. Looks like it's a murder mystery, which sounds really cool, especially considering it's Jane Austen themed. I'll have to think about this. Let's see how much is it? Originally $16.95. It's discounted for $8.48. Not bad. So I don't have anything that I'm really looking for in particular. I don't like to judge a book by the cover, but that is kind of the first impression <laughs> that makes me grab for it. So I'm just sort of glancing at the titles, looking for authors that I may know, although I'm not held to just that. I'm currently in the mystery section and I've nabbed two books and I'm definitely not done looking so I want to look at 
floor is very creaky. I want to look at audiobooks as well. Because as much as I love the idea of sitting down and reading a book, my time just doesn't really allow it all that much. Audiobooks are like my best friend. And I have a really long work commute, so it pairs perfectly. These are cool. This is Goldsmiths Hall in London. Methodist Chapel, Mount Alexander. I don't know where any of these places are, I just think the photography slash drawing is really cool. Gordon Castle. Cool! I don't need anything like this to decorate with, but I do love that kind of thing. If they had something about my hometown, I would definitely consider buying it. <laughs> so cold and so snowy. Oh, it's freezing and I am not bundled warm enough. Temperature dropped a lot, but I got some goodies, which is all that matters. Ooh, it's cold. I'm gonna turn on the heat. Seat warmer's on, good. <laughs> My phone is just about dead, so I'm going to charge that while I chat to you. Something funny that happened while I was in there, someone, a, a fellow customer, was looking around and I was kind of in their way, and so I said, just let me know if you need me to move. I was sat on the floor looking at a bottom shelf, and she's like, oh no, you're not. You don't have what I want anyway. And I, I didn't correct her, but I think she thought I was a worker there, that I, that I actually worked there, which was the highest form of flattery. <laughs> the fact that she thought I belonged in the bookstore just made me so happy. So I didn't correct her, I just said, well, the nice thing about this place is you never know what you're gonna find each time you come. And she's like, you're right. <laughs> and then when I was checking out, I was chatting to the very lovely bookkeeper there, chatting about my friend Lori Langdon because her books were kind of on display on the front wall and talking about how I had met her and just chatting about social media and all things surrounding what you would need to market yourself if you're an author. And yeah, it was really fun. I enjoyed myself. He did ask me for my YouTube channel link, so sir, if you're watching, thank you so much for letting me chat your ear off. <laughs> and I'm sorry. <laughs> Man, people are walking outside in this weather. Are they insane? <laughs> I mean, I know I was walking out there in this weather as well, so I really have no room to talk, but still, it's freezing. I'm really regretting the fact that I got an iced coffee instead of a hot one, but I just assumed that I would be too warm. <laughs> no, no. Should have gone with the hot coffee. I learned my lesson. I'm gonna get out of here and go home, and then I will show you what I got. Okay, let me show you what books I got. I only got three today, but I'm hoping to go to this place called One Dollar Book Swap where everything in there is a dollar. I've taken you there a couple times. Just because the prices are so good, I really want to go, but it was just too cold and a little too far out of my way for today. But I honestly don't mind because it gave me an excuse to go to my small town bookshop and I was actually telling the, the bookkeeper this, I absolutely love supporting small businesses if at all possible. I would rather purchase from a small business than a conglomerate. So I did my part today. <laughs> I bought three books. The first one I came across was 
this one. It's called Jane and the 12 Days of Christmas. The reason I pulled this out was because it literally said Jane Austen on the front and it was sitting like this when I found it so I was able to see the cover and everything. It's by Stephanie Barron and it reads Jane Austen turns sleuth in this murder mystery set over the 12 days of a Regency era Christmas party. And you know I love me a good mystery novel, especially when it involves anything to do with the time period of Jane Austen. So I'm very interested in reading this. Part of me wants to keep it until Christmas, but I'm not sure I can wait that long. We'll see. But at least if I don't finish it, I can pick it up around Christmas time. <laughs> the next one I came across was honestly because of the color of the cover. It's called Peaches and Screams, Another Mystery by G.A. McKevitt, and the tagline is a Savannah Reed mystery. This, if you look closely, I believe is a mock-up of a book that was supposed to be published. I'm sure it was published if they did a mock-up of it, but it even says the trim size, the page number, and it says, oh here, on the top, it says uncorrected proof, which I found really fascinating because all of you probably know by now that I'm writing a book series and I wanna get them published. And so seeing this, the proof of it, as opposed to the physical end result, is very fascinating. So I will be uh, taking this <laughs> and studying it for all it's worth, but to the credit of the book, it does sound really good. I read the first couple pages just to sort of see if I would be at all interested in it since there's no blurb on the back, but from what I can gather, it revolves around a woman named Savannah Reed who is a private detective and her private detective agency isn't doing great. In fact, the business of it is pretty much non-existent at the moment. She has no customers, nothing. And the story begins with her in a cop car next to a man named Detective Sergeant Dirk Coulter. And they have a little bit of a banter, which is very cute and slightly flirty, but not overly so. So I'm not sure if the book is going to pair them together as like a coupling or if they're just good friends that kind of jab elbows at each other. I only read the first couple pages. I have no idea what the plot is about other than those couple pages, but it hooked me in enough to want to give it a try, especially since I wasn't sure whether or not it got published or not. Part of me really wanted to just support this author <laughs> for wanting to get their book published. It's by Kensington Books, and the original price of it was estimated to go out as $22 or $31 respectively. It's just so fascinating to see like the thought process of how books are bound and sold and marketed. Did I tell you the title? It's called Peaches and Screams. And not that this has anything to do with the book, but peaches are my favorite fruit. And so I was slightly biased when I picked this up. So between the color, the fruit, and the fact that it was a mystery, this book definitely won me over. I'd love to know what the finished cover looks like, if it was anything like this or if it turned out to be something else entirely. The last book I picked up was called Timekeeper. It looks like it might be part of a series. It's by Alexandra and I am gonna butcher her last name. It's either Moner or Monir or Moner, I don't know. But uh, some variant of that. She's the author of Timeless, which makes me think that this is part of a series. It doesn't outright say if it's book one, book two, book whatever, but I love anything to do with time travel, especially when it comes with a superpower setting, like traveling through time is your gift. I love books like that. The back reads, those we've loved can never truly be lost, which I feel like if you've ever lost someone, that will instantly speak to you. It says, when Philip Walker appears as a new student in Michelle Windsor's high school class, she is floored. He is the love she thought she lost forever when they said goodbye during her time travels last century. Michelle then finds her father's journals, which tell stories of his time traveling past. When she digs deeper, she finds herself at the center of a rift over 120 years in the making, one whose resolution will have life or death consequences. I did read the first couple pages of this, and it starts out with a woman named, I'm gonna forget, Rebecca and she is not happy. She's apparently an ancestor of the current couple that live in this grand house, and she's able to time travel to an extent from the couple that are currently residing in the house are grandparents of Michelle, the main character of the story. It seems like Michelle is only a little one at the time of this event occurring, but Rebecca storms in, 
raging mad that Michelle is even in existence. Apparently, the grandparents were supposed to have prevented Michelle from ever being born. Apparently, Michelle's mother is no longer living, and everyone seems to blame Michelle's father for that. Rebecca is very peeved about the fact that Michelle has time-traveling abilities. She was apparently born during a time rift, which can, I guess, gift someone with time traveling abilities. And Rebecca's not pleased about that, and she's basically threatening the grandparents to do her bidding, to somehow go into the past to prevent Michelle's parents from ever either meeting or having Michelle. I stopped at that point because I didn't want to get too <laughs> deep into it, but it does sound really fascinating, so I might start with this, I'm not sure. But I'm really happy with the books that I found today. I will definitely do a review once I finish them. I've planned to do a book review for a while now, but I want to get enough of them to where it's worth watching. I don't want to just do a one-off thing. I, I'd like a dedicated video for that. So I'm currently reading a library book, and oh, that's something I should have done while I was out. Let's return my library books that are due. Oh well, that's fine. They're not due yet. They're just almost due. So I can't forget, I have to do that sometime this weekend. But that was really fun. I haven't gone to a bookstore just to browse with no time limit, no rush, no distractions, just me and a whole bunch of books. And it was nice because almost no one else was in the bookstore, so I basically had it all to myself, which is just, that's the dream. That's a bookworm's dream, to just have uninterrupted book time. And All Around Books, the bookstore I was at, definitely has that warm, inviting feel that makes you want to stay. They have cozy chairs that you can sit and read a little bit if you'd like. All the creaky floors, all the historic aspects of an old building. I really like going there. I don't go there enough. I'm very happy with what I found. And now all I want to do is go in and make the most of this gray, dreary weather and read some books. So I think I might just do that. But first I need to make lunch because I'm starving and haven't had anything for too long. I've gone too long without eating and I need to fix that. So brace myself for the cold and run into the house. <laughs> later I've just been chilling on my couch reading a few pages of one of my books that I bought today I started with peaches and screams because that was the one that appealed to me most <laughs> I finished making my lunch slash dinner which was chicken baked in the oven at 350 degrees for 40 minutes and I put my Fody foods marinara sauce on top and cooked it that way with it on top tasted so tender and so good. Oh, that really hit the spot. I thought about adding noodles, but I didn't feel like it. <laughs> it felt like too much effort. This kind of weather, the nonstop snow, the gray sky is just perfect for an afternoon of reading, so I think I'm going to leave the vlog here and just 
read a little bit. I never let myself do that. I'm always on the go, which is why I rely on audiobooks so much to read books because I just don't sit still long enough to make any headway on any books that I have. But on days like today where I'm not going to go back out, I'm not going to do anything around here, it just makes sense to curl up on the couch and read my book. Thank you guys so much for watching and spending the day with me. I'm so glad to have you here and I hope you enjoyed. Leave a comment down below if you made it to the end and don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you never miss a future video from me. My goal is to get to a thousand subscribers so that I can finally get monetized. We've hit the 700 subscriber mark. We're so close. I mean that in a few <laughs> hours of watch time away but it's honestly just been so exciting and fulfilling watching this little online family grow. More of you are showing up and commenting, just found your channel and subscribed, which just, can I tell you, makes my absolute day. So thank you for being here. If you're not subscribed, please consider it. It really helps my channel out and helps my goal of getting to a thousand subscribers. I'll see you all in the next one. Love you guys. Mwah. Bye.